All right, lads, so we're about to do the officer core tier list. There are a bunch of officer cores that are hidden behind the first doctrine of that doctrine tier. So there's one here, there's one here, here, here. And for Navy, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And for Air Force, there's one here, one here, and one here. It would be really nice, PDX, if it showed you here what officer core it unlocks. But unfortunately, it doesn't. You know what would be really, really freaking cool? If there was an officer core that unlocked on the very last research for each doctrine. But like, for instance, Modern Blitzkrieg unlocks another one, something that's really OP or Shock and Awe, for instance. Wouldn't that be really cool? The concept of unlocking something OP right at the very bottom. And then maybe as well, the very bottom one would also cost more as an officer core they would be more expensive maybe it would cost you 300 and 400 something to spend your officer core xp on at the very end of the game that would be a really cool concept and there are also three officer cores that are locked behind ideologies so there's one for communism there's one for fascism and there's one for democracy as well so now we have another reason why democracy might be op because there are some officer cores that are particularly op anyway let's begin the tier list but first this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a food delivery service that sends the food to you, all the parts of the ingredients, and you assemble the recipe. So you don't have to hunt out for the ingredients in a supermarket. You don't need specific instructions. You just work with what you've got, and you build the food from what they've sent you. Easy. This includes all the ingredients that they've supplied you with. And what's this? How you assemble it. Magic. And then you have here, the actual ingredients, all packaged up, all measured out. You just need to assemble it and follow the instructions. Dead easy. So what we're going to make today is the ultimate Tex-Mex Chipotle beef tacos. But seriously, the time element is massive. No longer searching for ingredients, getting confused by recipes online. Most meals take less than 30 minutes to make. So why not spend more time watching your favorite YouTuber? But that's not only just lunches. We've got breakfast and snacks and more. Herald Fresh works out to be 72% cheaper than eating at a restaurant or a supermarket. You can skip the shopping and just get to the eating. It's cheaper and it's quicker. What's the catch? I bet there's a limited amount of options, right, Dave? No. 55 high quality pre-proportioned meals with top quality ingredients straight to your door. Mexican, Italian, Mediterranean, and loads of other cuisines. And if you're a picky eater, the Hello Custom allows you to customize your box by swapping out one protein for another so you can get the perfect meal just for you. Use my link to go to hellofresh.com and use the code HOGFEEDBACKJULY16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes plus three free gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchase. Wow, eat. Click the link in the description to take advantage of the discount. Do it. All right, first of all, so we have Spirits of the Academy. These are the cheapest ones for the army. They only twist, cost 20 XP. And they're all about developing your existing generals or field marshals. So in this case, we've got Bold Attack, which has a increased chance of getting a plus one extra attack on level up. I'm not sure if this is an extra plus one attack over the existing two points they get whenever they level up. So if you're not aware, whenever a general levels up, they'll gain two points into attack, defense, planning, all the logistics and they're randomly distributed but there are some factors that can uh make it more or less likely. So does it, is this telling you more likely to get an extra plus one to attack in that category? I actually don't know. If that's the case, then this is mad OP. Let's actually find out. So we're going for bold attack. We'll find ourselves a general. So this this guy has got one, 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 one. So the way it should work is when he levels up, he should gain two points into randomly into one of these four attributes. So now we've got bold attack. Is, is he got a 50% chance more likely to get an attack? Or is he a 50% chance of more likely to get an extra one plus one attack on leveling up? So this guy now has gained, th oh, it's three points on level up. I'm wrong, actually. It's not two, it's three. So he didn't roll anything into, or anything other than defense. Oh my God, what an awful thing to roll into. So now he's gained one point into logistics and two points into attack. Level him up again. So he's gained two points into attack and two into defense. That suggests he gained two points. He gained three into logistics. He gained four into attack it is actually doing what i thought it was doing it's actually generating an extra point you're getting one into logistics and three into attack so as far as i'm aware yes it is generating an extra attack point out of nowhere but what about the planning logistics one because it says it adds plus one planning and logistics that is so strong I'm learning about the game here so we've got this guy now. He just gained one into attack, two into defense, and one into planning, and one into logistics. So he gained one, two, three, four, five points on level up. Three into logistics, two into attack. He just gained the points into planning and logistics now. 
maxed out planning, maxed out logistics. Seven, eight, ten, ten. Another one. Three into logistics, three into attack. He gained the extra points then. Seven, seven. No. Yes. 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 Not being as lucky. Five, eight, ten, ten. It feels like out of the three of them, the best one is this one and the weakest one is defense. So in Hoi 4, you kind of always walk into attack and having the most attack power. Now, don't get me wrong. When you're attacking, there's sometimes a little bit of defense baked in as well, especially when you move forward. And then there's maybe another division on the enemy side that pushing forward into that same tile that you cat attacked into and you have to defend at the same time. Hence the reason why attack and defense are kind of work in synergy. However, attack is better than defense in Hoi 4 because that is what you tend to do. As far as I can see, this seems mad OP. And depending on where this ends up at the very end of the tier list, this might get leveled up even more. So tenacious defense, though, on the other hand, is a little bit crapper because defense is not as a core stat as attacking because we're playing Hoi boys. This one's OP because it does double the amount of XP if there's a 50% chance. So I believe this one also is A tier as well. But we'll see as time progresses. All right, next up, Pulitzer loyalty this is one i pick quite frequently so this will give you an extra 15 percent extra stability based on how much popularity you've got of your existing party so in this case hungary is non-aligned and it is 44 percent non-aligned so more than likely it's going to give like eight or nine stability let's find out and it did yeah it gained uh, i think it was seven or eight stability based on your existing power that you've got your existing ideology that's in power i don't think you get access to it as the soviet union i think that one's specific to fascist countries and non-aligned countries i don't think anyone else can have that it also does two other things as well it makes assigning uh, recruiting new leaders 50 percent cheaper so you're less command power overall so if you hire someone now it costs less command power which is a really good way of like really spitting out generals i guess and it also makes you more likely to get politically connected and media personality traits Media personality means they are, take longer to, to reassign, so it's a negative trait. And politically connected means you get promoted cheaper, but get lane XP. So basically, you get in negative traits for that. So it's kind of a pro and a con with this one. I like the stability one, though. If you're playing a nation that has full ideological control, this will gain you a full stability of 15%. And you lose 20% stability when you're at war anyway, so it balances that out a little bit. Overall, political loyalty is actually really good. Forgetting the recruiting general bit, just for the bit of gaining stability. Stability is always something that's really good to use because you've got max stability. You gain more political power. You have less consumer goods use. You get a 20% production output. Is it 20%? Yeah, 20% production output and dockyard output. If you're looking to build a navy, getting that stability as high as you can is really important because at the end of the day that 20% extra dockyard output is going to be massive next up invasive leadership increases the speed that you gain tricks to by 20% commander by 20% and invader by 20% and it also means when you recruit a new general has a 50% chance of getting commando trickster or invader if you are specifically trying to build generals from the ground up this one is actually really strong too so we'll go for it now and then when we recruit someone there we go he's got invader and this guy's got commando and the reason you want to do this is some of the traits that come off that are also pretty good as well so for instance uh naval liaison is really good if you've focusing on navy and you want to stack as much shore bombardment as possible it's going to be really useful like for usa or japan or japan massive actually you'll be sweeping around the coastline with your troops camouflage expert is actually really good as well it's a way of basically saying i'm ignoring your air even though you've got air superiority which is mad op as well getting those traits early can be quite good if you want to build your generals from the ground up overall though it's less practical than some of the others so unfortunately i have to give it quite a lower on the tier so i'm going to give that one a d tier all right next up the spirit of the army and we have the professional officer corps this one is like the definition of a mediocre spirit so it gives command power gain plus 0.2 it's some niche scenarios you could go for that if you're like a democracy that has low war support for instance france and this will allow you to get attaches early on a little bit quicker so that there is some practicality to it but it's quite niche army xp five percent is always good to have there are some other democratic options that are better than that though and then the land option cost minus five percent once again it doesn't really pay for itself really because five percent reduction you only get it paid back once you're like ooh, like 10 doctrines in so it's not really worth it once again it is super mediocre if you have no idea what spirit to select and you've got extra xp lying around this is the one that you select but man it is so mediocre it so sits very nicely right in the center at sea next up is the elevated engineer cause so it's basically a defensive spirit entrenchment speed 10 percent is kind of meh railway gun bombardment plus five percent that's mad op engineers are free to add to divisions uh, it's okay i guess it never really pays for itself though i guess if you've got four divisions that need engineers on them 
I guess it pays for itself at that point because it co costs you 10 XP to add an engineer uh, brigade onto a division. So you need to put four on. You need to put four engineers onto four different divisions to actually take advantage of it. So I guess it will pay itself back. And also the engineer trait gain is 25% quicker. What is the engineer trait? I forget what it even is. Engineer is the one that give, is the useless one. That's really bad. Fortress Buster can be okay. And Scavenger oh, in some niche scenarios can be okay as well. Uh, some of the extra bonuses you get with this one are kind of meh. But I'll be honest with you. I've taken advantage of that railway gun bombardment because railway gun bombardment at the minute if you've not even tried it railway guns are mad strong mad strong and an extra five percent extra bombardment just make them even 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 stronger honestly i select this one a lot a lot a lot a lot and i think i'm going to give this one a b tier just for the fact that it's good but it's a little bit niche because if you don't have railway guns what's the point point? and i suppose if you go for it too it's got that extra cherry on top that you're going to get free engineers and you're going to dig in a little bit quicker i guess Next one is Proper Heritage. This one gives 5% attack for cavalry. I suppose if you're making cavalry. Supply combat penalties on core territory minus 20%. So if you are low supply in core territory, tends to be quite rare, I guess. And it also makes cavalry uh, free. There are a few instances where this is worthwhile. For instance, if you are making a complete full cavalry army instead of infantry, I guess this would be really worth because you're getting the attack and you have the ability to make the template free as well. Secondary as well, if you're going for the full MP garrison, yeah, let's just pretend this is MP. Pretend it's MP. Just close your eyes and imagine it's MP. And then in this case, when you add cavalry on, they're free. You're better off making a division from raw though. Because when you add it onto an existing division, it classes it as you're modifying the template. So this is free. So you all have to pay for this is 10 XP. And you can make a full template of this. Go And then you put the MP on here. And you can make a full 50 with cavalry division for 10 XP. That's really effective because you get you pay for itself back. But when you do that, oh, very rarely. Because once again, it's just something I never do. So it's something to think about. However, there is one thing on here that is mad OP. If you are the Soviet Union and they broke through European supply lines and they're pushing towards the Urals, this will give you a massive combat advantage because you are suffering 20% less by low supply than they are. This is really, really strong. And it's such an underdog that people aren't even aware of it. Uh, once again, three niche scenarios, but technically all kind of viable. Are we going to see some late game meta with cavalry as the Soviet Union? Maybe. I'm going to give this one a beta. Once again, it's good, but it's kind of niche. When I see niche, by the way, a lot of people don't get what I mean by that. But something that's niche, like someone who's only making cavalry armies, in that circumstance, that's a bit of a more narrow appeal. All right, next up is quick improvisation. Planning speed plus 20% is rubbish. Command power gain 0.2 per day compared to zero. Oh, so it's the same as officer cores. Interesting. So it's a democracy based one. And command abilities are 20% cheaper. Ugh. Is that any good? So the first one is useless. The second one is niche. If you've got low war support country, there are some low war support countries, the Netherlands, France. They're the ones that jump into my head. However, the command abilities ones. So these are 20% cheaper. So 80% of the cost to use this ability. Some of the abilities are mad OP. Like for instance, logistics wizard of extra supplies, mad strong. And I guess the command power boost is worthwhile as well because you're getting more command power. So therefore you can use more abilities but the problem is a lot of the command abilities aren't very good. They're not very good. I, I know all of you guys like force attack and uh, last stand can be useful. But the problem is when you use them, you take more HP damage and HP damage destroys your manpower and equipment. I never realized it, but it also damages war support. I never even knew that. I do use staff office plan quite a lot though. So I would take advantage of that. I'll be honest with you. It has more universal appeal this one than some of the others. But however, it is kind of mediocre at the same time. Once again, it's one of those ones you'd pick if if you really don't have any idea what to pick. So I'm going to give it a detail just because it just doesn't fill in that niche. If they buffed abilities on generals, then I'd probably be more likely want to go for it. But at the moment, I just don't feel it. Like some of the abilities like Siege Artillery is so niche. You never really do it very often. Naval Invasion Plan is kind of okay. It makes Naval Invasion's plan a little bit quicker. Probing Attack is absolutely dreadful. Uh, glider planes is good if you use paratroopers, but once again, very niche appeal. Makeshift bridges is is actually really good if you're attacking over rivers, but that's kind of a niche appeal as well. I guess less less niche because it's uh, there are a lot of rivers in the game. Once again, if some of these abilities were universal and you could use them everywhere, like the extra supplies one, I'd probably be more welcome to use them more often, but at the moment, not so much. 
Anyway, we're ne next up, we're on to the Spirit of the Division Command. So we've got Static Warfare, extra entrenchment speed plus 10%, which could stack with that one as well, couldn't it? Speed plus 10 and then plus another 10. Max entrenchment plus 10%, that's actually pretty decent. Elastic Defense Tactic has a preferred chance of 100% to decent defense. That Elastic Defense counters Blitzkrieg. Additional Overwhelming Firepower Tactic if it's preferred attack. Ugh. This is one of these ones you'd select if you are in a desperate defending situation, but when else would you go for this? Once again, attack is always more valuable in Hoi 4 than defense. I think for the most part, this is in E tier, just because if you're going to go for some defensive bonus, this is not the one you want to go for. There are a lot of good defensive bonuses in the game, and this is pretty weak, and you have to spend 50 XP for it, so not worth. Next up. Flexible organization plus 5% extra speed is okay. Division org when moving minus 15%. Mm, could be pretty good if you stack it with the offensive offensive doctrine. So you could stack it so basically you're losing very little org when moving, which is pretty good if you are going to make really fast divisions that are going to do overruns. Trying to get overruns in Hoi 4, aiming to try and get them is actually really difficult. If you're defeating an opponent that's weaker than you, you'll get overruns. But at the end of the day, they're weaker than you, so you would have defeated them anyway. And if you're trying to defeat a stronger opponent, you're less likely to get overruns. So therefore, you want to focus more on firepower than speed and org loss. So I don't know, man. I really don't like this one at all. And preferred tactic selection, minus 15. So that basically means if you were to select a preferred tactic, select a preferred tactic, it's cheaper to select it. Man, this is really bad. This is really bad. Incredibly niche appeal. I can understand a mobile warfare guy maybe wanted to do that, but you're spending a lot for this. 50 XP? Nah, it, it it's 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 bad. It's bad. You never want to be selecting that one. Maybe I could be moved on that one. I'll admit. Aggressive reconnaissance. Extra 50% reconnaissance. One of the stats that nobody cares about. Intelligence gained when in combat plus 15%. Interesting, I guess. I suppose if you want to stack your intel bonuses, that will go a long way. You would have to test that one, wouldn't you? Additional infiltration assault tactic is preferred by 100%. At the moment, reconnaissance is a stat that people don't seem to care much about. And from doing testing... It doesn't seem to be very good as well. So my advice is to spend 50 XP on this. Spend 50 XP on something else, my lad. Spend it on something else because this isn't it. Next up is reserve officers. Division training time minus 15%. And the additional delay tactic, if it's preferred. There's desperate situations where you're not prepared for a war and someone attacks you and you need to reduce training time. I guess are okay, I suppose. But man, for 50 XP, God, this is rubbish. <laughs> it's just so bad. Man, we're not doing very well for the last ones, are we? I'm definitely willing to admit that inflexible organization is not as bad as I'm making out, especially if you're making a mobile warfare based division. So I'm going to move that one to E. I'll admit I'm I'm bashing a little bit too hard at the moment. Feedback game is bashing one out live on Twitch TV. Victory or death. Organization loss when below 25% minus 15. So what it basically means is when you've got really low organization, organization holds better. So basically the org loss is less when you have low org. Guys, I'll be honest with you. This is hard to judge because this one needs to be tested to see how worthwhile it is because it might be an accidental side effect where this one might give you a bonus on the attack because it looks defensive. Don't get me wrong, the icon, victory or death, looks like defensive. But this might accidentally give a bonus to attacking as well when you've got low org attacking divisions. Ooh, that's hard, my dude. That's hard. I'm going to put it into E tier. All right, then, let's change your ideology. This one is new. The best of the best. So this is specifically unique to democracies. Starting level of new leaders is plus two. So basically they come out at level three instead of coming out at level two. And everyone has 5% less intelligence on you. Kind of a spy thing. However, when you make new generals, they'll come out with no trait. They will always have no traits. Man, man, oh man, oh man. So let's generate a few generals, shall we? So they're all level threes which interestingly enough, generate some interesting guys. Look at this guy, five defense. That's really good. And then there's a few with three attack, three attack. This is kind of interesting because in that situation where you've got lots of command power and you desperately need a general to level up, it might be like a good last stand kind of thing, you know? 
I feel like we've got ones here that are all about developing your general to get better and better towards certain traits. We've got ones about making generals at the very beginning have a certain trait so you can build them towards a different direction. So these are all about, these four here are all about developing your general from the ground up and building in the direction that you want. Where the best of the best is kind of like the opposite, isn't it? It's kind of like, well, I want a general that's decent, but I don't, I want it to be the roll of the dice of what it's actually going to be. I feel like there's some situation where that would actually be worthwhile. And I feel like I want to go C tier with that one. If this was a 50 XP one, I would have put this on like E or F tier. But the fact this is relatively cheap, this is a democracy only one, by the way. Only democracies can have this. Anyway, next one. We've got Relief of Command. This one is mad. This got added after No Step Back. They found out that uh, democracies due to the changes they recently made with the officer corps and harder to get XP for democracies, they added this in, try and buff the democracies. This is mad strong. 25% army experience, not just at peace, but also at war. In all fairness, if they wanted to balance this, they would basically say that the 25% XP is only at peace, meaning only for attaches, lend leases and volunteers. Then when you go to war, you lose the 25% XP. But that 25% XP will grind you so much more XP. Think about it, for every 10 XP you get, you gain an extra 2.5 every 100 xp you gain 25 put it that way that's easy to think about isn't it and then also all advisors are 50 percent cheaper which basically saves you countless political power i thought the 50 percent reduction with this was too strong but i can't i guess not the, everything about this is just mad strong not only is it only 35 xp too so it basically pays for itself immediately there's no doubt about it relief of command is a reason to go for democracies in hoi 4 i said it did you hear me just say that i just said a reason to go for democracies <laughs> Amazing. So I confirm what I said before. Political loyalty is only for democracies and fascist nations. The only unique one for uh, fascist nations is political loyalty. All right, next up, communism. Academy scholarships. So this makes army leaders 30% cheaper. They start with plus one XP. And to make them a commander as an advisor is 75% cheaper, which co costs command power. Yeah, this is not very good at all. Once again, gaining two levels of experience feels like really decent. But gaining one, I'm like, nah. Next up, another communist one, political loyalty. This is insanely broken. <laughs> if you are any other nation other than communist China or the Soviet Union, because these nations have unlimited manpower, they don't really take advantage of this very much. But this is practically unlimited manpower for the rest of the game. This gives a ridiculous amount of manpower for what it is. This is one that's essential for a nation if you are, for instance, playing as Paraguay. This is really, really, really strong. Unfortunately, it's not strong, strong. It's just strong. And the reason why it's not strong, strong is because it's kind of niche. Because if you are playing the Soviet Union, you don't need this. If you're playing communist China, you don't need this. Because you already have too much manpower anyway. So it is A tier. It's good, but not perfect. All right, boys, this is the unique spirit of the army for fascist nations and its state serves the military ah this is a bit of a mixed one really because most of the time if you're a fascist nation you kind of already on some kind of form of conscription law at the very start of the game for instance oh we're actually on volunteer only as peru so peru would benefit more from it than the average nation the idea is is the more further behind you are on your manpower draft law conscription law the more you would benefit the more steps that you go up so for instance instead of going from volunteer only to extensive conscription if i was to go for state serves the military it would now be 225 a political power saving me 75 political power which is a big discount however if you are limited conscription like italy and germany is at the start of the game kind of gain less from this so it, i guess it's not as good also one note as well it also gives you 10 percent extra political power once again i like stacking political power early game but you tend to need xp early game to make your division so once again the rewards are actually kind of okay when you play a normal game of hoi 4 you find yourself investing those xp into something else that's just going to pay you back more in the long run it's not bad it's not good it's just okay and it's b tier Alrighty then it's time to do the ones that are doctrine based all right so if you go for mass assault the very first doctrine you get a bunch of new spirits first one under spirit of the academy you get the queen of battle that makes the infantry treat leader trait gain xp 20 percent faster and also the new officers have a 50 percent chance of gaining infantry officer trait uh, this is garbage because this is one that you gain naturally just fighting anyway and it's probably one of the easiest traits to gain in the entire game this is completely useless i can't even think of a situation where you'd want to speed run it to get it quicker 
it, it's useless. It really is bad. It's really bad. Now, don't get me wrong. The infantry leader trait is a good trait to grind for, but you already get it pretty quickly just by playing the game normally. So it's it's so useless. There's no instances where you want to rush it So because you get it quickly anyway. So what's the point? Next up is under Spirit of the Army for Mass Assault. It is the Bayonet Strength. This allows you infantry experience gain from combat plus 10%, so you gain more XP from infantry. I mean, in all honesty, who doesn't do that? Infantry templates are now free. Motorized templates are free and mechanized templates are free. Once again, it's one of those ones that will pay for itself, I guess. However, when are you ever building infantry divisions bigger when you got 35 XP? I guess if you gain 35 XP for free at some point, maybe it's worthwhile. I guess the only one about these three, these four that's worth it is the infantry experience gain over combat. Because every nation in the game is going to be fighting with infantry at some point. So the extra 10% extra XP is going to be worthwhile. But unfortunately, this the other design cost reductions are just like a bit redundant. So I don't know. I feel a little bit mixed about that one. It, it has a worthwhile bonus. 10% extra XP is pretty decent. And I think that's the only reason why it pushes its way all the way to B tier. It's not great. It's not perfect. But in all fairness, it's doable and it's decent. I've just actually thought of a reason actually why this would be good. If you were converting from cavalry to motorized and then motorized to mechanized, that this will make it free, won't it? So that's actually pretty decent. That's actually another reason to go for this. So I think B tier is justified actually. This would actually be decent in the event you're upgrading to mechanized late game. When would you ever go mechanized under mass assault? I don't know. Anyway, the final one for Mass Assault under Spirit of the Division Command. Plus 10% HP and Relentless Assault Tactic as 100% chance, 50 XP. This is one of these ones that's kind of weird in a way because I feel like a tank division or an infantry division would really benefit from extra HP. One, you'd lose less manpower, which isn't an issue for a lot of the nations to go Mass Assault. But on top of that, you'd lose less equipment. But 10% extra HP isn't a massive amount. This is one of these ones that is, is, you'd have to do more testing to actually find out how good this is. I have a feeling to preserve equipment and lose less equipment this actually would be more worthwhile however when would losing less equipment be a good idea anyway i don't know needs more testing definitely needs more testing next one we're going to do is mobile warfare embrace the future which the panzer leader trait will gain 20 percent faster and new officers have a 50 percent chance of gaining the panzer officer trait which the panzer officer trait means you gain the panzer Le leader trait twice as fast you're gaining a lot quicker put it that way i personally don't really think this is very good but i guess in some instances if you're grinding specifically for panzer leaders and you're playing a nation that doesn't have panzer leaders to begin with aka someone like i don't know czechoslovakia or hungary or romania or something like that this would actually be kind of worthwhile i suppose i don't feel very passionately about this one but i'll give it a c tier because i feel like in that niche scenario where it is actually any good I feel that'll like be all right. I changed my mind. It's actually D tier. Once again, it's just too niche again. For the most part, Panzer Leader, you naturally get quite quickly if you're commanding tank divisions anyway. So what's the point? Next one is Motorization Drive. God, there's just so, there's just so many things. So super heavy tanks, modern tanks, medium tanks, and light tanks. What it's saying is when you make a tank in the tank designer, it costs nothing. That actually is really good. I never even knew this even existed. So there's two things going on here. Motorized gain more XP in combat. Mechanized gain more XP in combat by 10%. So this means that designing a mechanized infantry division is 100% cheaper. Hang on, I might be misunderstanding this. Let me just select it and see what's going on here. So we add on motorized, it's free. Okay, that's fine. So that's actually kind of cool, I suppose. Is it designing the tank though that's free? No. Okay, I misunderstood this. It's just specifically a making the division template. I thought for a second it was designing the tank in the tank designer that was free. Oh my God, I just thought of an amazing exploit and I realized it doesn't work. <laughs> So I suppose there's two things going on here. When you upgrade from motorized to mechanized, that's going to be free. So that's going to save you quite a lot of XP. So it'll pay for itself. And secondly, gaining the extra XP from attack of motorized and mechanized is also going to be pretty decent as well. And I suppose if you're expanding your tank templates, you won't have to pay for them as well, which you tendently do expand your templates quite often with tanks as well. So do you know what? It's, it's actually okay. It's one of those ones you go for and then kind of forget about and then be like, yeah, that's kind of cool, I suppose. It is actually decent. The only reason why it's not Esther is because it's uh, a little bit niche because you have to be making those bigger tank divisions and some nations don't do that. So it is what it is. Maneuver Warfare. You get an extra 5% uh, division speed, which is very similar to flexible organization. Interesting. And it also gives 5% coordination, which 
basically deals more damage to the top division, which is quite good for tank divisions. And you're more likely to get unexpected thrusts. Isn't this just like a version of inflexible organization that's just not as good? I know I say quite frequently that certain stats need to be tested to see how good they are, but we have actually, well, not me, I've not tested it, but I, I know another YouTuber who has tested coordination and he said it's not very good. So we already know that coordination isn't very good. So it is basically a crapper version of inflexible organization. So I can boost inflexible organization and replace it with uh, maneuver warfare. All right, next up, these are unique to superior firepower. So first of all, we have engineer schools. Engineer schools make you more likely you gain the trait engineer 20% faster, gain the fortress buster trait 10% XP gain and scavenger trait 10% XP gain. I don't understand this one because scavenger and fortress buster are traits that you assign. So are you telling me you gain more XP if you have these traits assigned, but you can't grind these. You have to select them because they're a trait that you have to pick. I actually don't understand that. I think that might be bugged. Regardless, it's a version of this one. So there's no point going for it. They're basically traits that aren't very good. So basically, would you want to grind traits that are a bit rubbish? No, it's, it's really, 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 really bad. Yeah, you'd never want to do that. Next up, we have Spirit of the Army and we have Overwhelming Firepower. So Support Artillery is free. Artillery designs are free. Infantry designs are free. SBGs are free. And Artillery Gaining Combat is plus 10%. I don't know, man. I don't really feel very passionately about this one as well. Because the truth is you're adding on two battalions of artillery, so that's 10 XP. You're adding on the support battalion of artillery, so that's 10 XP, so we're at 20 now. When does this pay for itself? That's the question. When does it pay for itself? I don't know. And I, I, and I guess the 10% extra XP from combat is decent, I suppose, but it's not very big. I don't know, man. I don't really feel very passionately about this one. I feel like in all fairness, it just isn't that great. Smoke and fire, 50 XP, gains you 5% breakthrough, which is decent. And suppressive barrage tactic is 100% preferred. This is actually pretty decent. At the end of the day, breakthrough is a stat that you can just add them more and more and more onto divisions and they tend to always benefit from it. So there's no reason to not ever do this. In all fairness, it's not that great when it comes down to how much XP you've got to spend for it. You will select this one last over all the other officer traits because 50 XP is very expensive. But at the end of the day, it's okay. It's pretty decent. So I would put that on a B tier. Are we ready for the granddaddy now? The big boy. The one that I love and adore that I need to talk more about because I love it. We're going to talk about grand battle plan now, boys. The grandest of battle plans. Oh boy. And my goodness, did they buff grand battle plan with the officer corps. I hope you're sitting down. I hope you are sitting down. First of all, spirit of the academy with grand battle plan. Theater training. You gain all terrain traits 20% faster. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Because remember, that means you are going to gain adaptable 20% faster. Don't forget that. It leads to adaptable. And plus, all of the terrain traits are pretty decent to begin with. All these terrain traits, they're not amazing, but at the end of the day, you gain them 20% faster. So, oh my God, this is a winner. And then you get 20% faster adaptable, which adaptable is the God trait, by the way. Plus, to take it a step further, whenever you recruit a new general, they're more likely to have brilliant strategist and inflexible strategy as a trait. They're the best traits in the game to get for a general at the very beginning. They're the best ones. So with that in mind, you could go for theater training, hire a new general. Oh, there we go. Brilliant strategist, plus one attack, plus one planning. You make him a field marshal. And because he's a brilliant strategist, you can go for aggressive assaulter, which gives you 10% extra breakthrough. So don't forget about this, guys. This has a secret bonus built into it where you're more likely to gain brilliant strategist, which is an amazing trait that is locked behind brilliant strategist. Guys, no doubt about it. But th theater training is S tier. It is mad strong. And it's only 20 XP. It's so cheap. <sighs> Next up, tip of the spear. Your base amount of doing a naval invasion, amphibious invasion, is 10 divisions. This will increase the cap to 20. However, it will increase the amount of time it will to plan that amphibious invasion. So 10 divisions is a set time. I think 90 days. I think it goes to 180 days if it's 20 divisions. Just be aware of that. But at the end of the day, if you're going for the extra 20 divisions, it's going to make your naval invasion more likely to succeed. Extra paratrooper, supply grace, 24 hours, meh. Marine supply, 24 hours. I guess if you're doing your naval invasions and, and paratroopers, it's decent, I guess. Naval invasion planning speed, 20%. I didn't know about that. So you basically now, you plan quicker 
I never knew that. And it makes Marines, Mountaineers, and Paratroopers cheaper. Well, basically free to add them onto your divisions. The two things there that really stand out that are really good is the Naval Invasion capacity and the Naval Invasion planning speed. I don't know why you'd be on Grand Battle Plan as Germany, but this will let you do your Sea Lion early and more effectively. This is ah, it's strong. The only thing I will say, though, it's not S tier because it is a little bit niche. Because once again, you are doing a naval invasion. And how often do you do naval invasions in Hoi 4? Mm, not every game, put it that way. Final one, logistics. Focus reduces supply by 5% for everything. And Navy fuel consumption down 5%. Air fuel consumption by 5%. An additional well-planned attack is more likely as a preferred tactic by 100% chance. Honestly... Supply at the moment is a big deal in Hearts of Iron 4. No, supply is the biggest deal in Hearts of Iron 4. Navy's used a ridiculous amount of fuel. And if you have like a thousand planes plus, your fuel consumption will be through the roof. 5% of fuel consumption will be absolutely massive. The only downside to this one, I suppose, is the 5% reductions aren't massive and the 50 XP cost is a little bit high. You probably want to go for theater training first, but honestly, the result and the payoff in the long run for universally your entire army to have less fuel usage as well as less uh, supply usage is essential. It is no doubt about it, an S tier. Guys, you didn't think when I was making this that I would be ranking the democratic spirit as well as grand battle plan spirits as S tier, did you? You never thought that was gonna be the case. Well, I have just blown your freaking mind. Blow your freaking mind. I didn't realize there was that many spirits, so I can't do the Navy ones or the Air Force ones today. I'll save those for a different day. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want more tier content, let me know in the comment below. If you want something you want me to rank in a tier list in Hearts of Iron 4 or any other game, actually, please comment it below. I love you. Bye. You think this video was good? Well, this one is the final form. Click it.